Holy moly, this is crazy. Hello, what is up guys? I'm your host Gordon and welcome to another one of my video. Today we got ourselves yet another fully automatic shell ejecting M416, which as you can see, this skill is a lot more intimidating. And the kickback and the firing sound of this blaster is absolutely surprising as well. I mean, take a look at this. Holy moly, this is crazy. Well, as compared to this one, this blaster produces a lot more kickback than that blaster. And oh boy, that sure is amazing. Just like Mac Potato. Mac Potato is a local Malaysia online foam dart blaster seller who sells rare imported foam dart blaster just like this one. And if you guys are interested in other shell ejecting options, Mac Potato got you covered. Link is in the description down below. In the box, we got the blaster itself, a handguard, a fake suppressor, a buttstock, a fake scope, a 10 round magazine, a hand grip, a flash hider, a pair of iron sight, battery and charger, a sling, 10 shells, 20 darts, and a manual. Let us first install the buttstock. First of all, grab the receiver and put the wires into the buffer tube. Align the buttstock with the blaster, push it in, and twist it in place. To install the handguard, align the handguard with the grooves on the blaster, push it in and then twist it in place. You can choose to friction fit the flash hider or the fixed suppressor. To install the hand grip, click on the button over here and slide it into the rail. To install the iron sight, just slide it in on both ends of the blaster. To install the fixed scope, just loosen up the nut, put it on the rail and tighten it up. To install the battery, we have to first remove the buttstock, connect the battery, put it into the buffer tube and reinstall the buttstock. The blaster comes with these kind of darts which is slightly shorter than the regular full length darts. The blaster also comes with these kind of chrome shells and this is how you put the darts into the shells. And this is how you put the shells into the magazine. Put on the magazine and this is how the blaster looks like with everything installed. Okay, okay, first look at the blaster. As you can see right off the bat, the color of the blaster is super intimidating we got matte black we got those metallic red and of course most importantly the scale of the blaster is of course not one of those funny scale blaster yes i know i know the buttstock is still in the smaller side it might not be noticeable sometimes but when you kind of look at the whole package yeah you kind of notice the buttstock is kind of small but not as weirdly small as this one so i will consider this blaster not funny scale blaster but seriously there is a good news for the buttstock. This is of course an adjustable buttstock. Depends on your size, you can actually adjust the buttstock to fit your preference. But that is not the good news. The good news is that the buffer tube of this blaster seems to be an actual buffer tube size. If that's the case, in theory, we should be able to fit a Nexus Pro buttstock on this blaster and oh boy yes we can and now this blaster looks a lot more better yes it is true that the diameter is correct but seems like the buffer tube is a little bit on the longer side as you can see we can't really uh, push the buttstock all the way in but no worries I think you can always trim this down a little if you're a big fan of swapping up buttstocks but I guess this time the provided buttstock is an acceptable one not to mention that the color scheme of the buttstock matches the entire blaster like we got the black over here we got the red over here the handguard of this blaster as you can see it is really really nice I mean that black and the metallic red just matches the whole blaster beautifully and the handguard on this blaster is long way longer than the Nexus Pro and of course it is way longer than the Lehuey M416. So let us talk about the quirks and features of this blaster. As I've mentioned before it comes with an adjustable buttstock. The grip of the blaster is extremely comfortable not to mention that the trigger pull is nice and it feels really clicky. Definitely it 
it is one of those button switch type trigger. The blaster also comes with a pair of foldable iron sight which is of course a much more reliable aiming mechanism than a fake scope that came with it. But this blaster sure looks good with the fake scope. Speaking of intimidation, this looks intimidating. And speaking of intimidating, the blaster comes with options. I like that. What I'm talking about is intimidating options. As you can see, my blaster comes with a flash hider over here, not like one of those uh, super crazy long fake suppressor. That is actually option one because this blaster actually comes with an actual fake extension silencer over here. I mean suppressor. I mean after installing this super long suppressor again, this looks super long. I mean with the buttstock extended. Oh my god, this thing looks like a sniper. So I would prefer to install a red flash hider over here. It looks much more nicer and sleeker. The weight of the blaster is of course satisfyingly heavy. Heavy. Way heavier than the Lehuey M416. The Picatinny situation of this blaster is of course overwhelming. We got a whole roll of Picatinny rail on top of the blaster and Picatinny rail all over the handguard. And not to mention that the added tiny little details such as these tiny numbers on the Picatinny rail makes the blaster looks even prettier. As you can see, the blaster is made out of mixing some sort of a nylon material with plastic. The receiver over here clearly feels like nylon. The buttstock the handguard, the accessories, the magazines obviously felt like plastic. So yeah, I would say that it is a mix of nylon and ABS plastic. The fake charging handle over here definitely is plastic. Oh, speaking about the charging handle, this charging handle is just purely for cosmetic purposes and for sort of a charging gimmick. It doesn't really open the shell port over here. Well, at least the Lehuey M416 has like a functional charging handle behind here, which actually opened the shell ejecting port, as you can see. And not to mention that it has one of those fake bolt release button over here which is really cool. Sadly, this version doesn't really have one of those fake bolt release function. But at least when you turn the blaster into firing mode and click on the trigger, it will open up the shell ejecting port over here. Well, at least there's some gimmicks in it. Speaking about firing the blaster, the blaster only have one firing mode, which is full auto. Even though on the right hand side of the blaster, it clearly stated semi-auto. Well, as you can see, the fire selector switch is located on the left hand side of the blaster. It only stated there safe and auto and there is no semi. The only way to get this blaster to function in semi-auto mode is trigger discipline. Well, something like this. It works. And not to mention that the shell ejecting intensity of this blaster is super strong. I mean, seriously, while firing this blaster, you can even felt the intensity of the shell shooting off the blaster. I mean, that's really satisfying. Even though both of these blaster has full auto, the rate of fire of this version is actually slightly slower than the Lehuey M416. I mean, take a look at that. Compared to this. Yeah, it is pretty obvious that the rate of fire is actually slightly faster for the Lehuey version. But to me, I think it is still acceptable given that there is a massive bump in build quality of this blaster. Well, sort of a give and take, right? And one more thing I would like to mention about this blaster is that that kickback when you fire the blaster is way stronger than the Lehuey M416. And oh boy, it is super loud as well. I mean, that kickback... <laughs> feels really, really satisfying. I'm definitely hoping to see some good results during the testing. So yeah, without further ado, enough of me talking. Let us go test the blaster out. In this test, I will also be comparing the original darts with the Dart Zone's bamboo darts.
Okay, okay, the performance of the blaster is actually not bad. If we actually use the given darts, the blaster shoots from 55 FPS all the way to 62 FPS. Definitely not an impressive number if we actually use the given darts. But if we actually use half length bamboo darts, the blaster can actually shoot from 64 FPS all the way to 79 FPS, which is definitely a Nerf Elite performance. The accuracy of this blaster is actually not bad as well in seven meters you can definitely hit the target but it will requires a little bit of arcing if you decided to use the original given darts even though in full auto mode the accuracy might suffer a little bit but you can still hit the target operating this blaster so far i did not encounter any jams yet which is a good thing the only thing that i will complain about is that we don't have an actual semi auto switch which means that it will requires you to have really good finger control even though that this blaster doesn't really have a lot of those tiny little gimmicks but yet this is still a fun blaster not to mention a much more intimidating skill and these non flywheel shell ejecting imported blasters sure are getting good every time when i try to get something new man i'm so looking forward for the upcoming new release and i'm hoping for something even better in the future so yep that's all for today guys like this video if you like it dislike this video if you do not like it subscribe if you haven't already and of course i'm going to see you in the next video. Adios guys! Bye.